Hiya, this is a first lesson of a differentiation second pack. Now it's all about differentiating trig functions. I'm going to jump around a little bit in the pack, but don't worry about that. So let's have a look here. So we know that differentiation is a gradient. So if you imagine on this sine graph here, when the angle's zero, you look at the gradient of the graph, it's roughly one. If you look here at pi by two, it's a stationary point your gradient is zero. So the value on the gradient graph, so this is your original graph and this is your gradient graph. Then if I look here at pi, it's minus one. So the gradient there is minus one. If I look at three pi over two, it's another stationary point. So it's got a value of zero, the gradient. And here, the gradient's one. One. If I sketch it through, you can see that the sine graph If you differentiate it, becomes the cos graph, which is down here. So it says it's possible to just expressions. So if y equals sine x, dy by dx equals cos x. If I do it again, if I look at the gradients of the cos graph and graph it, I get minus sine x. Now there is quite a nice little clock face that you can use, which I personally think I invented myself, but I'm sure I didn't. If I start with sine x, it goes to cos x. If I start with cos x, it goes to minus sine x. If I start with minus sine x, it goes to minus cos x, and minus cos x goes back to sine x. So if I go clockwise round the clock face, I'm differentiating which is quite nice because if I go the other way, I integrate. So I can now differentiate or integrate sine and cos with no issues whatsoever. Right, let's have a look. Uh, this example here, I'm just going to leave uh, until a little bit later. It's a bit of a first principle thing, so it's better to have a go. Right, let's have a look here. Right, now then. If I differentiate sine of 2x plus 1, or if I differentiate cos of 5x plus pi, both these differentiate, the sine 2x plus 1 becomes a 2 sine 2x plus 1. The cos 1 becomes a minus 5 cos 5x plus pi. Now you've seen this before where both these numbers have come from. You've seen it before when we've differentiated e and we've differentiated ln's. It's your bracket differentiated. So that 2 has come from differentiating the bracket. Essentially I'm using the chain rule. So in general sine of ax plus b would be a sine ax plus b and cos would go to minus a. Oop, oh, let's get that wrong from. It's the wrong way around. So a cos, sorry, ax plus b, and minus a sine ax plus b. There. Right, let's have a look on the next page. So the next page, so oh right, so it's talking about small angles. Now these small angles are useful for this example here and the one on the previous page. So I'm going to come back to them in a minute or two. Right, okay, let's have a look. So it says using these results with the product and the quotient, so that's interesting, I can find out what happens if I differentiate tan x. So it says about the quotient rule, so if I change tan, into sine x over cos x, then the top bit, f of x, is sine x. And I know that if I differentiate it, it goes to cos x. And the bottom bit is cos x. And if I differentiate it, it goes to minus sine x. If I use the, the, quotient, uh, the quotient rule formula, 
which is f dashed of x g of x. So that's cos x times cos x minus uh, g dashed of x f of x. So minus sine x sine x all over g of x all squared cos x all squared. So dy by dx is cos squared x add sine squared x all over cos squared x. I know the top line is sine squared plus cos squared is 1. Just expand the page. So dy by dx is 1 over cos squared x. I also know that sec x is 1 over cos x. So 1 over cos squared is 1 over secant squared x. So I know if y equals tan x, that goes to sec squared x. So I also know from the ones before where I'm doing the chain rule, if I had y equals tan of 4x plus pi over 2, that would go to, I differentiate inside the bracket is a 4, and then the tan differentiates as secant squared, and that would be 4x plus pi over 2. So that's quite nice. Right, let's have a look at these next two problems. Uh, right. I've got product rule. So if I differentiate it, whenever I do product rule, I do first bit differentiated. I can't see what my power is. So first bit differentiated, 4x cubed times by second bit cos 3x. Add on second bit differentiated. So just do my sine cos minus sine minus cos. Differentiating that way. So cos goes to minus sine. And because it's cos 3x, it's minus 3 sine 3x times by the first bit x to the 4. Uh, that gets your full marks as it is. But you could take out an x cubed as a factor. But that would get your full marks just for how it was. Right, let's have a look at B. So B is a quotient rule one. Quotient. So let's have a look then. So f of x is 3 sine 5x. So f dashed of x is 3 times by. Sine goes to cos, but the 5, this gives me 5 cos 5x. So that's 15 cos 5x. G of x is, uh, x, is it x cubed, isn't it? So g dashed of x is 3x squared. So if I use the formula, which is f dashed of x g of x, so that's 15 cos 5x times by x cubed minus g dashed of x f of x, 3x squared times by 3 sine 5x. All of that is over g of x all squared, which is x cubed squared. No, put the wrong thing down there. Now that would get you full marks, but it might be nice just to tidy it up a little bit. So 15 x, well actually, an x squared will cancel, won't it? But I'll write it out first. So 15x cubed cos 5x minus 9x squared sine 5x all over x to the power 6. So if you look, the x squared will cancel there uh, and nothing else will. So I'll get 15x cos 5x. Please remember that the 5x is attached to the sine and the cos, so it can't just randomly cancel over x to the 4. Uh, let's have a look at 